Okay, so we're on to our last couple of steps in our hypothesis testing. So previously we've talked about identifying our data, uh, determining the population and parameter, stating our hypotheses, setting our alpha level, identifying our test equation, calculating out our test statistic and our p-value, and now we're on to step seven. Okay, so step seven, we need to either reject or fail to reject the null. So when we do our hypothesis testing, we are only collecting data to either say that, hey, the baseline assumption is wrong or that we didn't collect enough data to show that the baseline definition is wrong. What we do not say is that we prove the null hypothesis. We're not proving anything with, um, with our hypothesis testing. Rather, we're saying, hey, we've collected enough da data or evidence to suggest one way or the other. So we reject the null hypothesis based on a condition. So if our p-value is less than our alpha, we reject the null hypothesis. Now if our p-value is greater than alpha, we fail to reject. And that those are our parameters. Now, uh, that's true if we do a one-tailed test. If we do a two-tailed test, it's a little different. If we do a two-tailed test, we need to compare our p-value to be less than alpha divided by two. And same thing, greater than alpha divided by two. We have to compare against half of our alpha, because remember our alpha is kind of like our error, and we throw it to two tails, so our probability, our p-value has to be less than alpha divided by two for a two-tailed test. So let me put that up. This is for two-tail, and if we're just dividing by, or comparing to alpha, that's for a one-tailed test. Okay, so we've got all of these now. We finally need to write these, we can do eight as a conclusion. Oh yeah, and so our conclusion needs to put our findings in words. So we can't just walk up to somebody and say, hey, I rejected the null hypothesis because the only people who would understand you would be a statistician. They'd say, good job. Everyone else is like, I have no idea what you're saying. So we need to write our conclusions in words. The whole reason why we figured out what, who, who the population is and what our parameter is is so that we can then write a conclusion in terms of our population and our parameter. Okay, but if we find a significant result so far, all and when, if we find a significant result, that means that we have rejected the null hypothesis. If we find a significant result, the very next question is, we're only able to say in the conclusion that it's either greater than, less than, or not equal to the, uh, the null hypothesis or, or the, the baseline statement. And the next question is always, well then, where do we think that the true, either proportion or mean, is? And that's where we have to integrate in something that we've already done. So I kind of call this like 8.5. And this is, we need to include, include the confidence interval slash bound. And this is only, we can say, necessary when we reject. All right, when we don't reject an all hypothesis, it's kind of, well, we don't really need to include the confidence interval uh, because we're not saying that we should change it. So we just kind of keep going along with our baseline assumption. But that is how we do our hypothesis testing. So we've got these kind of eight and a half steps that we take uh, so that we can systematically go through and make some database decisions uh, to determine whether or not uh, we have significant evidence to reject somebody's baseline claim. And we will go over in our software videos kind of more of the nuts and bolts of how to get this done.